Hey there! Welcome to another episode of Isabel Explains. You probably just started learning about radicals or roots and have no idea what they are. Well, then keep watching because in this video, not only will I show you what radicals are, but also how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. Let's go! Alright, first of all, let's define what is a radical, also known as a root. A radical simply is the opposite of an exponent. I'm sure you know that adding is the opposite of subtracting and vice versa, and multiplying is the opposite of dividing and vice versa. Well, what is the opposite of elevating to an exponent? Well, finding the root. Now, if you're not very confident about using exponents yet, I suggest you first watch the video that I made on how to remember the rules of exponents without memorizing them. Now an example. We have three squared, which is nine. That means that the square root of 9 is 3. Now, not the square root of 3. I see a lot of my students make this mistake of making the square root of 9 equal to the square root of 3. That is not correct, okay? The square root of 9 is equal to 3. Let's do another example. We know that 5 squared equals 25. That means then that the square root of 25 equals 5. All right, now you do it. What is the square root of 64? I'll give you 10 seconds. I'm going to disappear when I come back. I hope you got it. Got it? All right, the answer is... 8 because 8 squared equals 64. I hope that makes sense. If you need a little more practice, I'll leave a worksheet on the comments below. Now, how do I add or subtract radicals? Well, in this case, what works for me is to treat them the same way I treat variables because, after all, variables are just numbers and so are radicals. Before we start, there are three main rules that you need to keep in mind at all times when you're dealing with radicals. Number one, you can only add or subtract radicals with the same root and the same radicand. Number two, you can only multiply or divide radicals with the same root. And number three, you cannot add, subtract, multiply, or divide radicals by anything other than radicals. Now, let's get all that mumbo jumbo terminology out of the way. Every radical looks like this, which is just a radical symbol. The number inside the radical is called the radicand, and the root is written outside. Now be careful so that it doesn't look like a multiplication. Now that all the mumbo jumbo is out of the way, let's get to it. All right, so let's suppose that you have the square root of three plus the square root of two. Now remember that rule number one says that you can only add or subtract radicals with the same root and the same radicand, right? That means that these two cannot be added because even though they have the same root, which is a square root, they have a different radicand, which is a three and two, therefore they cannot be added. You have to leave it expressed as is. So what happens if I have the square root of three plus the square root of three instead? Well, like I said earlier, I like to think of them as if they were variables. So if I had, instead of square root of three plus square root of three, if I had x plus x, how much would that be? That would be two x, not x squared. Remember, x squared is x to the second power. It's x times x. So, if x plus x would equal 2x, that means that square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 would be equal to 2 square root of 3. Hope that makes sense. All right, so what would happen if you had the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3? Well, don't overthink it. If you had x minus x, what would that be? Zero, right? That means that the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 is just zero. So what about two square root of three minus the square root of three? Well, if we use the same analogy of two x minus x, that would be just x, right, or one x. So if I have two square root of three minus the square root of three, that's what's gonna be the square root of three. All right, so now you try it. Let's do the seven square root of five plus two square root of five, and I will give you five seconds. All right, you got it? I hope you got nine square root of five, because remember, if this would have been seven x plus two x, that would have been nine x. 
So therefore, 7 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5 is just going to be 9 square root of 5. I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on to multiplying and dividing radicals. Keep in mind rule number two, you can only multiply radicals with the same root. Meaning, if I have something like the square root of 3 times the cubic root of 7, I can't do that. I have to leave it expressed as it is because I cannot multiply those. They don't have the same root, even though they, we, they don't need to have the same radicand, but they don't have the same root, so I can't do that. So, in the case where we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 2, we can multiply that because they have the same root even if they don't have the same radicand, right? So, the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 is just going to be equal to the square root of 10. And the same thing would happen with the square root of 7 times the square root of 6 because they have the same root. So, that would just be equal to the square root of 42. Now, what happens when I divide the roots? Well, I just divide inside of the radicals. For example, if I have the square root of 15 divided by the square root of 5, that's just going to be equal to the square root of 3, because 15 over 5 is 3. If I have the square root of 14 divided by the square root of 7, that is just going to be equal to, you guessed it, square root of 2. Now, let's kick it up a notch. What would be 3 square root of 7 times 4 square root of 11? Now, remember rule number three. You cannot add, subtract, multiply, or divide radicals by anything other than radicals. That means that I can multiply three times four, and I can multiply seven, or the square root of seven, times the square root of 11, but I cannot multiply three inside the seven, or three with the 11, or seven with the four, or anything like that, okay? So how much would that be then? That would be three times four, which is 12, and then the square root, of 7 times 11, which is 77. And that's it. Let's try another one. 7 square root of 5 times 2 square root of 10. I'll give you 5 seconds for that one. Almost run out of air. Alright, so how much would that be? That would be 14 square root of 50. Because 7 times 2 is 14. 5 times 10 is 50. You gotta keep it inside of the square root. Wham, bam, done. Now, you may be thinking, well, doesn't 50 simplify? Yes, it does. But that is a topic for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you can receive notifications for more videos like this one. I'll see you next time.